Hello and welcome back to the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today's uh, video will be our continuation of our Bible study that we've started in the book of Jeremiah. And we are on the 34th chapter for this video. And before we go into in our, our Bible study um, with that chapter, I'm going to start with the book of Galatians. Another scripture that I'm led over into in reference to our reading. And then also in reference to the children of Israel and uh, their disobedience and how God deal, he did, he did deal with them according to that. And then based on the leadership also, because that's what we're going to take a look at today in chapter 34. We're going to take a look at the leadership of Zedekiah and then how God also dealt with him. Now, not that we haven't already talked about that in other chapters, but God's going to go into it again in this chapter that we're going to read today. But before we do that, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 7. The Lord says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season... We shall reap if we faint not. And as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Okay. Now those four verses, the Holy Spirit led me over into, and uh, again, in reference to this chapter that we're getting ready to read because the king of Judah, who was Zedekiah, he began to mistreat uh, the Israelites as he was the king over them. Um, and we're going to read into that. But God led me also to read that scripture in reference to him because we're going to see that God is going to give him over because he sold to the flesh. God says he's going to give him over to the kingdoms of the earth also, which would be in the flesh. OK, because he's in the spirit now. He belongs to the kingdom of God. He has a king position. As the Heavenly Father decrees and declares and told us in the book of Revelations that all that come and all that are a part of his kingdom become kings or priests, okay? Or within the New Testament, you're all of the above because the Holy Spirit carries all of that. Well, in the Old Testament, we saw the operation of each position just as we look at the operation of uh, King Zedekiah. He's king over Judah. He's a part of the tribe of Judah, he's also reigning as the king and leadership over them in this specific scenario, okay? So uh, chapter 34, we start with the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and all his army and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion and all the people fought against Jerusalem and, they, uh, and against all the cities. And this is what the word of the Lord was to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, he says, go and speak to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and tell him, tell him, thus says the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Now, we've already went over uh, that particular vision God gave to Jeremiah in other chapters pretty much the same thing that he has he's done washed his hands with Jerem with uh, Jerusalem they continued the house of Judah continued to be rebellious when they were in that land so therefore God has given them over to the king of Babylon okay so here we're seeing that prophecy again because that's what this is God given the prophecy again and we're also going to see um, let me go ahead let me go back into it okay verse 3 says and thou shalt not escape out of his hand, but shall surely be taken and delivered into his hand. And thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon. And he shall speak with you mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. And yet hear the word of the Lord, O king Zedekiah of Judah. For thus says the Lord of you, thou shalt not die by the sword, but you shall die in peace and with the burnings of thy fathers. 
the former kings which were before you, so shall they be burned odors for you. And they shall cry for you, he says, saying, O Lord, O Lord, for I have pronounced the word, says the Lord. So here we see God tells Jeremiah to go and tell King Zedekiah, you know, how he's going to be at peace at one moment, but, but then also explaining to him how he's going to leave earth too and where he's going and how it's going to end with him with the formal kings he'll be buried with them and um so then he goes on to say then jeremiah the prophet spoke all these words to Zedekiah, and he told him what god said of judah in jerusalem he said when the king of babylon's army fought against jerusalem and against all the cities of judah that were left against lachish and against azekah for these fenced cities remain of the cities of Judah. But this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after King Zedekiah, or King Zedekiah. After King Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem, he made a covenant with them to proclaim liberty unto them, that they were going to be set free, okay? But what did God just tell Jeremiah to say in the previous verses? The prophecy he gave to him, he said, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, go and speak to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and tell him, thus says the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of king of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. So that's what the Lord said. Again, we have this controversy like we had in other chapters that we read about. And of course, it's dealing with the same issue while the children of Israel were in their land in Jerusalem and how they disobeyed the Lord and how he uh, was beginning to go forward with his judgment using the king of Babylon to be that judgment upon them. And so uh, King Zedekiah tells the people that they're going to be set free though. They're not going to be set into captivity. So in that every man should let his man servant and every man his maid servant being a Hebrew or a Hebrewess let them go free, that none shall serve himself of them, to wit, of a Jew, of his brother. So now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his maid servant and everyone his maid servant and man servant, let them go free, that none should serve themselves of them anymore. Then they obeyed and they let them go. Okay, so what's happening here is the children of Israel had uh, even though God had brought them out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of being servants unto Pharaoh in Egypt, well, they became uh, maid servants and men servants unto themselves also in this new promised land. Okay, there were some that served that were maid servants, and then there were some that served that were men servants. So they all served. Some of them served one another. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, the covenant was made that after a certain period of time, they will go free. Well, King Zedekiah is changing that order from what God originally ordered. And we're going to see that, too. He says here in verse 11, it says, But afterward they turned, and they caused the, the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go free, they caused them to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids unto themselves. Okay? So after Zedekiah, King Zedekiah changed again the prophecy that Jeremiah said in reference to the land of Jerusalem, he also changed the covenant that God had originally made in reference to the children of Israel being uh, certain ones being servants to one another. He changed that covenant and said that they could go free during that time that God had also ordered for them to go into basically bondage under the king of Babylon okay so once they did let them once king Zedekiah did arrange for them to be let go free and they were freed afterward it says here in verse 11 they turned and caused the servants and the headmates whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for her handmaids and we're going to see down here in the other verses and they were brought to be maid servants and servants to serve King Zedekiah, Zedekiah, okay? 
So it says, verse 12, therefore the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the, in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bond, out of the bondmen, saying, at the end of seven years, let every man go, his brother, an Hebrew, which has been sold unto them. And when he has served six years, thou shalt let him go free. See, that's the covenant that God made. Okay, once he served six years, he can go free. But your fathers hearkened not unto me, neither inclined their ear. And you were now turned and have done right in my sight, in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And you had made a covenant before me in the house, which is called by my name. Okay, see how God says, well, you let them go from being, you know, uh, enslaved and let them go into liberty so you did right by me he says but verse 16 you turned and polluted my name and caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid whom he had set at liberty first you let them go free let them you know go at his own pleasure to return then you caused them to return and brought them unto subjection to be unto you okay to serve king Zedek zedekiah so first he did let them go from being slaves, but then he uh, put them back into bondage, into the bondage to where that they would become his servants and his handmaids, okay? And therefore, thus says the Lord, you have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his neighbor and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you now, he says, says the Lord. I proclaim liberty to the sword for you, liberty to you to the pestilence and to the famine and i will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth so that was the reward that came and went forward toward king zedekiah because again the people god had already made a covenant in reference to the people serving what if they were going to you know once they were brought out of captivity and uh, they were in their own land certain ones could become servants and serve other ones but after a certain period of time six years i believe no at the end of seven years let go every man his brother and hebrew okay because they're brothers one another brother uh hebrew and israelite is the same thing israel he says let them go which has been sold unto you and when he has served three when he has served six years thou shalt let him go free from you but your fathers hearken not unto me, neither inclined their ear. Okay, so they his fathers didn't do uh, King Zedekiah's fathers and those previously before certain ones didn't do as the Lord had told them to do. But he acknowledged King Zedekiah for doing it. But then King Zedekiah turned around and put them right back into bondage in order to serve him and him only. Okay. No one else, none of the other Israelites, none of the other Hebrews, but only him. And just to, uh, for reference of and confirmation, uh, let me see, I've got, where is this? It doesn't get Second Peter, I believe it is. Second Peter. We're going to go over to Second Peter chapter 2. Uh... And this is just for confirmation with the Hebrew and the Israelite. Second Peter chapter two. Uh -uh. Is it check? Wait a minute. I might be taking you into the wrong one. Uh -huh. Oh. No, it's Second Corinthians for the clarification of the Hebrew. Second uh, Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse twenty-two, and this is just for clarification on the Hebrew and the Israelite is, and what I was saying in reference to them becoming servants and handmaids, and that the fact that the Israelite and the Hebrew is the same person. Okay. Paul began to give his testimony in 2 Corinthians and started in chapter 10 and went all the way over into chapter 11. But at the end of chapter 11 and verse 22, he says, are they Hebrews? So am I, because we know that Paul also was a part of the tribe of Israel. And he says, are they Israelites? So am I. Okay. Are they 
the seed of Abraham, so am I. And again, this is just for clarification and what we're reading in reference to uh, the Hebrews becoming uh, servants and handmaids and the fact that Hebrews and Israelites are the same people. Okay, so going back over to uh, chapter 34 in the book of Jeremiah, we are on verse 18. And God begins to say, I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, okay, those that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant, which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in two and passed between the two parts. He says, the princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests and all the people of the land, which passed between the parts of the calf. I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life and their dead bodies shall be for meat unto the fowls of the heaven and to the beasts of the earth. And King Zedekiah of Judah and his princes will I give into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are going up from you. For behold, I will command says the Lord, and cause them to return to this city, and they shall fight against it, and take it, and burn it with fire, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without habitation. And now, God, is, we had already read that in the previous chapters, but this was another notation that Jeremiah had taken in reference to King Zedekiah, and the fact that this was another thing that he did that God was oblivious about, because uh, he changed covenants rearrange the covenants that God had originally made with the people and changed it into the covenant that will serve him, okay, because that's basically what that covenant did, that he changed it. After he let the people go free and be at liberty, then he turned around and put them back in bondage in order for them to serve him. So he began to make them as known in the New Testament where Jesus Christ said uh, those that would be called and referred to as false prophets he began to walk in that particular spirit. And the false prophet, now that's in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2, I had that noted also to take a look at. Because uh, false prophets, if we look at 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 3, we see that through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Okay, and that's basically what he began to do with those Israelites that he was placed king over and over to guide, just like Solomon, the great Solomon, King Solomon, who was the leader over the uh, tribe of Judah at one point in time. So this particular king was also, but he used that particular authority. He, he used his leadership to basically serve himself. All right, so that is going to conclude our Bible study for chapter 34 in the book of Jeremiah for today. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.